guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a 5.3 liter LM7. I don't know what this thing came out of, but I just picked it up off of somebody for $75. Now I bought this motor as a cylinder one, no compression engine. So I brought it home and I went ahead and drained the oil out of it because they didn't do that. And while doing that, I got about five gallons of water out of the crankcase of this motor. So I'm thinking it's going to be pretty hard to spin over because all that water got in there and rusted the internals. So we're going to get a bar on this thing and see how well it spins. Let's see if this wants to spin over at all. Oh. Uh, sounds a little funky. Sounds like it's pushing some rust through the cylinders. Stops about right there. Get about a quarter quarter turn out of it. Not even about an eighth of a turn. Then it stops again. Got a little bit of rotation. I don't hear any uh, rod bearings clanking around. That could be a good sign. Also, I didn't mention at the beginning of the video. Have a new recording spot now from the last few places. Better lighting here and a little bit cleaner and a better background than the garage doors that are falling apart behind me. So we'll see how this turns out. Try to keep the floor a little cleaner over here. I'm going to go ahead and zip these coil packs off real quick. Get this water pump off and see how much coolant we spill. Please don't dump coolant everywhere. Oh, just a few drops. Sounds like there's some water in there. Now let's get these manifold bolts off. That one was loose. I like that better than them snapping off. I'm going to see if I can take this side off with just the impact. Get the coolant crossover piping off quick. Go ahead and get these knock sensors out. That's the easiest one of those plugs have ever come off. And that one's full of water. Let's get the valley cover off. Come on, get off there. There we go. And yeah, just dump that swimming pool right in the motor. I'm going to pull the valve covers off, starting with this side. Decently clean in there. All the water probably washed everything off. Same story for this side. I'm going to go ahead and get the rockers out, break them loose first, and then zip them out with the gun. Not seeing any of the normal wear on the end of the push rods that these LSs are known for. This engine must have had decently low miles on it to not have any damage to the end of the push rods. Either that or it just got lucky. Let's go ahead and take the spark plugs out now and see if they tell us anything. Got all the spark plugs out. And the only thing I'm really realizing, this is cylinder one and you can see there's cracks all over the ceramic on it. Cylinder two has one small one. Now could that be why they said no compression in cylinder number one? because it wasn't getting spark. 
And those spark plugs all look great. I'm going to break the head bolts loose on this now and see what we find. These are all short head bolts, so this is a later model 5.3. That's probably why they were so tough to take out. Let's see how much coolant we can dump on the floor. Hopefully none. That came off super easy. Combustion chambers look good, just very dirty. This head's actually super clean. The head gasket barely even stuck to it. Already seeing some signs that this motor's demise is probably from sitting outside in the rain. Don't know why people do that, but I guess it's a good way to ruin a motor. I was just about to come over here and pull this head off, and I realized something. That valve spring is broken. You can see where it's split right there? Snapped right off. Let's get this off and see if that valve's damaged. Well, I'm doing a really bad job, guys. Forgot to press record when I was pulling this head off. But here is the valve with the broken valve spring. You can see, you can just kind of flop it open with your finger. But there's no signs of the piston hitting it anywhere. So I don't think that's not far enough down for the piston to hit it because that's at about the same level as the deck itself. So it got lucky enough not to drop down far enough. Everything else just looks dirty in the chambers, but in great shape. Some puddles of water, plenty of rust. That one's got a pile of, I don't even know what. Same thing there. That's probably what's holding our motor up. Let's go ahead and see if we can spin it over now that we have the heads off. Get some penetrating oil in there. I don't know what it's going to do in these ones, but we're going to do it anyways. Let's see if that helps. See, is it tight enough that I can break this crank bolt loose with it? That'd be nice. Oh, it is! Well, now we can go ahead and start pulling everything else apart. I guess we'll go ahead and zip this front cover off over here. Like about time to flip this motor over and see how much we can dump on the floor. Let's go ahead and get this oil pan off right away. Very dirty. I think that's about all we're going to find in there. Why did I do that? Let's get the pickup zipped off of here. And now the windage tray. Now we can get our cam gear off. Timing Jane has plenty of play in it. That's what you want.
That is nasty. All gunked up, rings are stuck. This one's not as stuck. The rings are actually free, besides the oil ring. That one's stuck. But it's very dirty. Surprisingly clean on top, though. That one's dirty. You can see where all the rust was built up over there. Rings are stuck in that one though. Dirty, dirty. That one's very dirty too. Go ahead and break all the main cap bolts loose now. Main bearing looks great. That one's got some grooving in it, but nothing too bad. Flew right out. Same story, not too bad. Thrust bearing looks great too. Now we can yank this crank out. Those main bearings do not look too bad at all. This poor motor. And there's a rod bearing too. I just noticed there's a heat tab on this thing. It's not melted out though. So it wasn't overheated. It means this engine probably came from a junkyard at one point. Get this cam retainer off so we can pull the camshaft out of there. Now we can wiggle this camshaft out. Wrong way there, bud. That there bump stick appears to be in pretty good condition. None of the lobes are ground off. I don't see any rough marks on them. All the bearing journals are good. Now I can get you a better view at these cylinders. You can see the rust in all of them. That one's actually pretty good. That one's not too bad either. I think this side's the worst. It's got three real rusty cylinders and that one's not half bad so this poor motor ended up breaking a valve spring which is very common in these motors 
such a simple repair. You get a valve spring changer tool to do it while it's on the motor. You put air in the cylinder. Super easy to change out. And they pulled the motor out and sat it outside to rot away. This could have been fixed. This motor could have been in perfect condition. I, there was no issues of any of the bearings. And the heads were actually super clean. So the only thing that killed this motor was sitting outside because a valve spring broke. Check your springs if you ever lose compression in an LS engine. They always break in these motors in a certain generation. So always check that. But definitely got some decent parts. I can probably sell this block for 50 bucks as a core that somebody can bore out. And I'll put a new spring in those heads and sell them for 100 bucks. So definitely made out plenty for my 75 bucks I spent on this motor. Thanks for watching the channel. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Have a good day. Bye.